I love that Sid is just here for being here. Just cheering us on. Is rapping. Hey, yo, nobody want to hear your shit, old man. Mic check one, two, one, two. How about you shut up and let us get these folks a real show? I hate to break it to you, bitch, but you're wrong. See ya, see ya, need ya. Think about next up is your boy called Ted Koch, bringing you the thrill of the fight. One of a good one. It's just God. This vanilla ice in the trash. Entertaining than Dio was. What is going on? I wish I had you, uh, Yuffie. just the same song again, I think. Or it was. Wait, was this, was this a good choice? Hey look, Slice and Dice. Who's it, Titus? It's not over until the fat chocobo works. Let me start saying that. Good night. Here we 
Oh no, it's a Don Cordio cactus. The Don Toir. Cacneo. Dude, I can't. This is like too much. I, you know, what I was just saying that Square Enix has like the greatest sound design of all time. I, I don't think this is like a point against it. I think this genuinely is doing a perfect job at making me feel like I'm actually in an arena. Because this is exactly how it feels whenever I'm in a big arena like this. I can't hear anything. Everything is too loud. Everything's echoey. I have no idea what anyone's saying. I think they've hit that perfectly. I, you know, it's true to real life. Also, what is this song? <laughs> Where's the guy Where's he at? Why can't I hit him? I guess you can't target him when he's doing specific stuff. Oh my god, he's riding right there deep. My life is complete. The meme is real. Oh no, it's World of Final Fantasy. Why are you excited about that? Because they're hype men, they have to be hype no matter what. Even when they're losing. Better be his name. Oh, it's the Don Barry, all right. And Constant. And there. Okay. All right. We made a, we made a big mistake. Am I messing around? Also, I don't think I ever bought oh, it. Point five run. Oh, 
Well, AI Cloud just pressured both of them by dodging the knife. Oh, nice dodge. Dude, the AI just does all the work for me. I gotta assess this thing. The Ignatic... Enigmatic creature that Don Corneo purchased on the black market, immediately enamored by its strikingly similar swish of hair. With lantern and chef's knife in hand, this green robed fiend approaches its target with an eerily accurate chortle. Pretty much the same thing. Some deadly kitchenware. Gotta be careful. So when's he gonna knife? Oh, okay. Uh, well, that counts too, apparently. Still got Corneo to go. Right. It's back. I knew it was gonna happen because he didn't die in the original. He like ran away. Now, who wants to be the first lucky lady? He still has the broken horns. Saw Vincent back there just chilling. What if Vincent had like a big bucket of popcorn? City businessman and his precious pet. Completely enough fire damage will light them on fire and pressure them. When their HP falls below half, they will begin evading fire spells and Corneo will douse any flames. They will crash into a wall if Ferocious Charge misses, pressuring them. So fire first and then not fire. Oh, he's doing the dance! Shoot. 
I need MP. Oh wait, I'm in an arena, but I can still use items. I'm thinking I'm in an arena, I can't use items. But I can. Charge me. Charge me. That's not a charge. He's on fire. God, they got pulled in. Oh, he's doing it again. Dude, it's crazy. 
just not smart. Oh, Corneo almost fell off. Finally, hit the wall. I wasn't even like in front of the wall, though. He just kind of hit it. And that didn't last very long, did it? Don't mess around. Hey. We cutting them off? Of course we gotta make this joke again. Or should we rip them off? That or smash them maybe? <laughs> Let's fill them with lead. Don't bother. I'll just bite them off. <laughs> Picking on a poor small business owner. <laughs> but hell, I can take it, and I can give as good as I get. So, all of you can kiss my ass. Yeah. Hi ho, my sewage stallion. <laughs> so, anyways, we won. Let's take the key stone. <laughs> and we'll take it now, thank you. As you wish. I will not deny you what is yours by right. Behold, your prize. our answer. Get 
time to get some payback for the mines. A grudge match, then! Over which I must insist you allow me to officiate. Two bosses in a row. What the? To ensure a fair and entertaining bout, we'll give you a chance to rest before the festivities. Once you're ready, you need but say the word. So, okay. Can I? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I won't even say it. The song, though. Did they literally. Did they have a meeting? Did they have a meeting at Square Enix headquarters, like before the game was even started? And they were like, okay, guys, what are our goals for rebirth? And somebody was like, I want a different song for everything in the game. Every single moment in the game is its own song. We, if we repeat a single song, we're fired. Like, because I swear, we cannot repeat a single song. Even this little goofy moment. It's like, yep, this has its own version of the Turk theme. Like, it's unreal. Hey, not Mega Potions this time. You think you could hurry it up? Let me kick your ass already. It's so polite. I love... <laughs> I love these... Fourth wall breaking moments. But it makes me question other moments. If we were willing to do this, you know. But hey. I'm just gonna love it for what it is. Did we really need a rest? Like, I feel like, so, do you guys feel like the reason this was here is because it would be two bosses in a row otherwise, so, like, they wanted you to have a chance to change stuff? I get that, but at the same time, like, I don't think the game has been, it, it was kind of easy up to a point, and then I felt like there was a pretty good, like, difficulty spike. I feel like the game shouldn't be afraid to throw two bosses at us, you know? like throw two bosses at us and if we can't beat them then put us back before the first one and we have to come up with a solution to how to beat two bosses with one setup like I feel like that's a a challenge that has not been given to us yet to be able to do a setup that works for more than one boss you know yeah, to be fair, it was like an entire gauntlet of fights and then Corneo. So it has already been like four bosses by the or four battles before this moment. But I don't know. I don't see like like I don't know if this was really necessary, but it's cool. I it's it's funny. Are you ready to duke it out? It's funny, we, we take the funny over the Fantastic. Then making the sense. <laughs> well, you know, again, like, we need to consider the normies fair, but then that goes back to my argument with, like, the yin-yang guy exploding on us. Like, if they're willing to have Yang auto-kill you if you do the wrong thing, then... Do we really need this? You know, like it feels unbalanced, like either beat up the normies or let the normies never lose. But like, it feels like this game's confused as to whether or not it wants to be easy or not. That, that's my only gripe is like, I'm fine with it either way, but it just feels like 
a little confused as to how difficult it wants to be, you know? I'm okay with them being easy because there's going to be a hard mode afterwards. So I don't really mind the game being easier. But I just wish it would make up their mind. <laughs> because then it just feels kind of like a bad balance. Ow. I am excited to fight Elena again. She is so fun to fight. She should be. Tifa versus Elena. You still have the same weaknesses. Jeez, damage. Wait, is this scene different depending on who we pick? Because we don't always have Tifa here. That was nothing. Oh, okay, wait. That's probably why. Because you're locked in to your date until after Corneo. But here, I think you have to have Tifa Aerith because Barrett Red 13 ran after, unless they changed all that, but I seriously doubt it. So Barrett Red 13 ran after Kate Sith. So you're stuck with Tifa Aerith. So that's probably why they gave you so you could move your stuff. That makes more sense. You could just do that with a pause screen. Like remember back in, remember back in Remake when you get to the top of the tower and you're forced to have different party members and it gave you like a minute, it like gave you a, a menu to like change your stuff. They could have just done that, but this is funnier, so. Right, <laughs> right, but funny. We need the funny. Funny is good. We like funny. So I did not let them charge this last time. I should not have let them charge this this time. That's oh, crazy. Killed Cloud on her own. There's so many items. You okay? Bring it! 
Time for this. I'll show you what I can do. Too much? You took my bone is bone is rigging. What is going on? He's talking to Rufus in the background. having a very bad time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't have a good time. <laughs> that was incredible. We're just getting warmed up. Right, Rude? This fight's far from over. Esteemed spectators, if you would be so kind as to direct your attention to the center of the ring. To ensure a fitting climax for this spectacle, we've invited a special I knew it. Now, let's give a round of applause for... Well, I didn't know it, but this is what I was hoping. We've all been waiting to see... What would happen with Rufus? Disappointed in his humor. You got my number this time? Let's see. Shall we? I've heard of aggressive managers, <laughs> but this boss is cutthroat. It's over down darling with a vengeance. And you want to see with the action? Don't even think about leaving your seat. In fact, don't even blink. This is so great. We all wanted to see Rufus again because the first fight's so good. And also we wanted to see more Rufus because just in general he's he doesn't do much in the original game, so I wanted to see him more in the story and I wanted to see another fight. And we're getting both. Of support stuff on cloud. He just gave me D protect. I think I also have assess on cloud. I think 
think I gotta hit him when he goes back like that. Or just when he reloads. I like how the announcers are like, you need to study him. He's just like in the original, where like, he actually punishes you. He was kind of like the Souls boss of Remake, where like, the rest of the bosses you could just spam, but he you couldn't get the weight. And he's like the same thing here, which is dope. Although I would say that Odin was also that, but Odin's also optional, so... Cancel my hands. It's a lot easier with the dodge turns your attacks to ranged. Reloading or landing an AT ATB command after he attacks will pressure him. ATB commands will leave him open longer than basic attacks. Hitting him with certain attacks while he is reloading or after he attacks will stagger him instantly. Uh, so I wonder if Braver is the same way. So just like in Remake, where if you Braver him, he insta, insta staggers? much easier with the dodge thing than it was in the original. And hit him from a mile away. Might as well. is like still here and still important. Such a small thing in the original. They found a way to make it like awesome. Oh. I gotta assess the doggo. I forget how to sever the link if like Braver does it also. It's interesting. Oh yeah, 
uh, follows up with corkscrew if you get hit now. This is such a cool fight. So how do I... Guessing I just hit him during the reload. Probably. like the original. Use cross slash to get rid of the dog. <laughs> he mad. It's too slow. I should have just triple slashed. Shot. Maybe he's got more bullets now. I want to try to hit him with a braver to see if it's an insta. Dodge would have worked. Oh, that, he didn't reload anyways. Can I pressure him and then? Probably not. That didn't work. Quickly! It hit him though. It was pretty hard in the original too. I think there was a really good way of doing it though. There was like a certain thing you could block and then it set it up. But I honestly don't remember. Sleep them, yeah. Wonder if you can still do that in this one. Enough of this farce. So, are we gonna go after him? Not yet. First, we find Kate Sith, right? Right. <laughs> Oh, we disqualified. Should we look for the We obviously team? won. After Kate, okay? This is so interesting because as soon as Rude and Elena appeared, I was like, oh, okay, we're gonna go the route of like Kate Sith doesn't double cross us. 
because... Oh man, now we got the big band Kate Sith theme. Um, you know, because we're a little closer to our comrades in this game and it kind of makes sense to not do it that way. But then they did it, so now I'm like curious. How this is going to work out. And is it going to be the same thing where he's holding someone hostage and we're forced to take him or are we just going to forgive him? Ah, eh, forget about Kate Sith. I'm going to take a break. What a crazy upgrade to, you know, before it was just come here, do the date, leave. Now it's this whole crazy, I mean, the, like the biggest boss rush of the game so far. So am I just bouncing in between Tifa and Aerith or? I'll get this boy to appear. Yeah, I have to be sneaky. Or there's like secret. Sir. Is there a cat in your briefcase? here. I don't know if I should be like, oh, I see him. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I should be, like, genuinely looking for him, or if there, I have to, like, have it happen somehow. Wow. Way to attempt, Aerith. Kate, wouldn't it be faster to take the thing than to run in the middle? Like, like this is much faster. section. Oh. Taking this. Take it. How could this have happened? <laughs> you took it. I love that we took this mechanic of kicking stuff to its ultimate level here by like kicking stuff out of our way, chasing Kate Sith. 
Alright, Kate sits important, but weapon more important. Ooh. I'm taking this. This is coming with us to the cutscene. Can't stop me. Okay, apparently you can stop me. What the? How does does this keep happening? <laughs> Guys. I had it perfectly lined up. And then you guys went and ruined it. I had his head in between the legs. It was like perfect. It was stuck. I could control it. This. No. Yeah. Just a little smaller, you know. Oh, I heard it. It almost made it. Got it. Be safe. You too. from the start that had to end this way, but it still stings. For a moment there, it felt like we were friends. I am so pissed at Kate right now. Probably laughing at us from his new office. You're not mad. He played us for fools from the start. <sighs> Just thinking about it makes me want to beat the crap out of him. Hey, are you okay? I'll be fine. Just thought I was a better judge of character. Forget him. So what's the plan then? We are not just gonna let him take the black materia, right? We're gonna go after him, right? And how are we supposed to do that without any leads? He's got a point. The only one who knows where the temple is, is Kid Seth. Hmm. But he told the Turks, whose chopper I should be able to track. Really? I know which radio frequencies they use. The moment they get on comms, I'll find them. Well now, the old gal's got a transmitter. <laughs> Then we're in business. All right. I'll run on ahead and get her warmed up for you. Later. It's settled then. We follow Shinra to the temple. And the black materia will be ours. Man, that like final hit of the song there. Transmission from KG. One moment. Oh, hey, hey, hey. why? It's your KG. Old chopper, pal. KG. You didn't forget about it. No, I've been waiting. Sorry for the wait. The next trial is ready and waiting for challengers. If you're still interested in collecting all those treasure pieces, 
Then head on over to the third reactor. Hope to see you again soon. Another trial and our treasure so, await. I'm guessing if you do all the proto relics, this is the first moment where you can do this one. But they maybe could have timed that a bit better. <laughs> Like, if you have them all done at this point, then this goes off, like, when you leave or something, not, like, the second that cutscene ends. Like, literally hits that, like, fantastic end of the note, and then it's like, be doo beep <laughs> Just another, like, thing that could have timed a bit better. Kind of reminds me of the Gina Talk thing, but... Either way, excited I get to go do this now, because I've been waiting. Like, when do we get to finish this? Um... So this is really cool. So instead of Kate Sith turning on us and then holding a hostage to stay in our party, because I feel like that doesn't work as well in this game, given that we're all traveling together and talking and, you know, like imagine if that had happened and then we like went and did side quests. Like it wouldn't have made as much sense for Kate Sith to be there. Right. So instead he's going to meet us there and probably sacrifice himself that way. So like, that's how he gets back into the party instead of holding the hostage and then him sacrificing himself, like makes us trust him again. Instead, like we're going to detrust him all the way up to that point And then it's going to happen. So like, I like that a lot. That's really cool. And Vincent, like, yeah, kind of a plot device here, but you know, makes sense. And, Hey, he has to be in the party now instead of being optional, so it makes sense he would help us here. Um, yeah, this is a cool way to do it. It's not better or worse either way, really. It's just this is a cooler, this is a cool way to do it for remake. It it makes more sense to do it this way, so it's cool. Um, and I really like uh, I really like how we are genuinely mad at Kate Sith. It doesn't feel like, you know. We're mad at him, but then things just kind of keep going. Status quo. Like, it feels like the status quo has actually been interrupted here. If we go and do side quests, Kate Sith will not be with us. It even returned his equipment to us. So, like, I like that a lot. It's really cool. Was not expecting them to go that deep into it. And it feels real. It feels like it, you know, in this... Not only is it real, but it's something that did not happen in the original. You know, you don't lose Kate Sith here, so it's cool. Um, can we fast travel? We can. So this actually works out perfect because we can go do this. We only have like 20 minutes left, so we can go do this. And then continue the story tomorrow. If this is even a 20 minute thing, because you sometimes take... A long time. I guess we won't be doing the last one with Kate Sith. I was thinking maybe like, because we did the first one with UV, second one with Aerith. I was like, oh, the last one might be Kate Sith, but I guess it's not going to be because he ain't with us. And actually, I think there was four. So I think there's two more. I bet you one of them is Red, red 13. I was thinking, how cool would it be if, uh... Oh, there's the giant. <laughs> how cool would it be, in that one scene, Barrett called Red 13 Nanaki. How cool would it be if he's the only one that calls him that? And everyone else calls him Red 13. And they had that kind of special bond together where he calls him that. That'd be cool. I don't know if they're going to keep that going or not, but oh, yeah, that's right. We got to play Shadow of the Colossus. Forgot about that. Helicopters. 
Boopy boop. Wait, you can raise it in the buggy? Wow, that's a cool. That's a cool detail. continues to amaze me that this is one of the biggest games I've ever played, but it is also one of the most polished games I've ever played. Like, isn't that just insane? Every little thing I think of, like, oh, but can you use the cactuar in the buggy? Probably not. Like, nope, you can't. You know, every little tiny quality of life thing you could think of is here. And yet, it's like the biggest game I've ever played. And I think a big part of that is the fact that they had everything right, you know, done and they just had to finish, you know, make the game in four years. They already had everything in place, but it's also just impressive. Impressive no matter the reasoning, like, that they were able to polish it to this degree. What in the... Maybe I go through here? I'm not bungee jumping down there. I don't see any yellow paint. Yeah, I, I want to go back to my remake review and kind of look at... I mean, I know, like, the air combat was one of the big ones, but... Look at all the, the complaints I did have about remake. And specifically look at which ones they... Um, kind of focused on... I do feel like air combat in particular was a thing that a lot of people struggled with in Remake and they specifically targeted that. But you know, what else? What else did they specifically target in this game? Because there's a lot of things. This is still too high. Or I guess it's the same spot. Get in this way. Guessing no. The whispers were a big complaint, and so far they're still here, but they're a lot. They're not as intrusive, and they're also like explained better. Yeah, they're just not as like in every scene, too, which was a big issue. Even the people that liked the Whispers, I feel like they, they were just in every scene. It was, like, way too much. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, the side quests are obviously leagues better in this game, but I also think that they weren't as important in Remake, you know? But man, the difference between, my cats are missing, go get my cats, and let's do this quest where Tifa and Barrett go off and talk about Wedge and how much he meant to them, you know? like. The difference is crazy. And I don't think that every side quest is going to be that way. <laughs> um, but certainly a lot of the ones we've done are like that, so... Yeah, it's just a different approach. Like, they weren't necessarily terrible in Remake, but the approach feels more like some of the modern games that I've played, more modern open world games I've played, like uh, Forbidden West, where they really mean something. They, they explore things that the main story doesn't have time to explore, but are still interesting, you know? Like, I feel like 
a lot of games, they have their main core story, and they kind of decide, like, okay, what can we explore and what can we not explore, given how much time we have, right? We have 60 hours to tell this story. What can we tell? So it's like, okay, Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge, we have their moments at the beginning of the game, and then we have, like, one final monologue they give when you're climbing up the tower, right? But we don't really have time to explore how they became friends, what, you know, all this, like, backstory, like, we don't really have time to go into, like, a lot of backstory with them. We just kind of want to tell the stuff that's important. Uh, and then with the side quests, it's just like, oh, okay, what's what's cool to do around here? Like, okay, Wedge has cats, so let's have a side quest about cats and yada yada, right? In this game, it feels like they approached it, okay, we have 80 hours to tell the story, so let's get all the main stuff that's important to the story and let's write out We'll actually pause that. Let's write out everything we want to tell. Like everything. Big's backstory, Wedge backstory, Jesse backstory, uh, this Queen's Blood character's backstory, stuff about Chadley, stuff about, you know, stuff like that, right? They get everything out and then they're like, okay, what's important to tell in the main story? And then they, they put all that, right? And then all the other stuff, instead of leaving it on the cutting room floor, they implement all that stuff into the side quests, right? So for example, Chadley, not super important to understand exactly where he comes from in the main story, but that's an interesting thing that we've written out and want to tell the player. So let's implement that into a side mission, right? And that's such a better way to do it. And it really feels like that's how they did it. They took everything off the cutting room floor and were like, we're gonna put all this into side quests. Instead of just being like, well, we're in sector seven. So let's do a side quest that has something to do with the bar, you know? Like instead of going by where you are and what kind of interesting, funny antics you could get into in that area, they specifically target like stuff in the story that they don't have enough time to tell through the main quests. And that's how it felt with Forbidden West as well. You'd get to this really interesting, cool area, but the story required Aloy to like keep traveling, right? So let's let Aloy keep traveling. But if you stay there and do some side quests, now we get all this cool lore about the area and the people that live there and the history of that specific settlement and, and everything, right? So. It definitely feels like this is the way to do side quests, you know, and I want to see more games do it like this because I've said it before, Forbidden West is my favorite world to explore. It is unbelievable how alive that world feels and you can just fly to some random city and accept some random quests and by the end of it, you feel like you just met a main character. Like it's really wild how well done the side quests are in that game. And I think this one, now that I've played this, is giving it a run for its money for sure. But, um, you know, just the scope of like how awesome all the side quests are in that game and, and how hard all the, the voice actors go. Like this voice actor you meet for one quest and it feels like they're, they put so much thought and work into it that it could have been a main character. You know, it's, it's so impressive. I don't know if I'd put the side characters in this game on the same level. I think they're cool, but they're not necessarily like um, as crazy in depth maybe as Forbidden West, but like, we haven't even done many of the side quests. We, we've really only done like the proto relics and like one or two side quests. All the stuff we've done is just the intel stuff. I haven't done like the actual green side like these. I haven't done really any of them. I did the frogs. The thing with the dog, the chocobo thing, which, yeah, the chocobo thing, the card quest, the Kyrie one, the farmer one, or sorry, that was the one with the sleeping guy in the cave. And I think that's it. Oh yeah, we did the one with the doctor. And we did the one with Ferret's weapon. And I don't even remember this one. Oh, Shawnee's. I thought that was mandatory. I think that one was mandatory, even though it says this is a side quest. 
So there's still so much to do. You know, to, to check out. And see kind of how special these are. It wasn't? Okay. I thought you had to do it to get the choke bow. You probably, maybe you could just get the choke bow and then bail, like I did with that other quest. Ah, is this... Wait. No, I went this way. I have no idea how to get to this rock. Just... I went this way. Yeah, where's my base jumping minigame? How's it going, Shaq? Yeah, it's so much better than Zero Dawn. If, if you played Zero Dawn and you had any amount of enjoyment out of it, I cannot recommend Zero uh, Forbidden West enough. Truly. I And I mean, I wouldn't go out and pay full price for it right now and drop everything you're doing and play it, but I would highly recommend you do play it at some point. Ah, I see. Uh, yeah, I can't. I cannot recommend it enough. Truly, I it has quickly become one of my favorite games, and a lot of it has to do with my just personal enjoyment of um, the character interactions in that game. Character interactions are like my favorite thing in video games. I even went to school for communication, and that whole just the way characters interact is fascinating to me. And there's so much good character interaction in Forbidden West, so I, I do think it's a little bit of a bias. But I've talked to a lot, like when we played, we played through Forbidden West on stream, and many of the people that were with me when I played it said like, it's so, so, so much better than Zero Dawn, and everyone should try it. Um, so, I don't think I'm alone in saying, I don't think I'm too biased by saying that. It got great reviews, too, so. Yo, Fitz, thank you for the Prime. And Livestream, thank you for the gifted sub. And Dame, thank you for the Prime full year as well. Thank you. And Gray, thank you for the 28 months. Thank you, Dame. Appreciate that. My eyes! It's a jumbo! I've been waiting all this time for a jumbo. Granted, there was one in the minigame, but... <laughs> waiting for him to stop. damage infinities no uh oh it's gonna be red 13 this time and we get the song I can still move my tail lucky you <laughs> that was actually kind of fun. Huh. Speak for yourself.
I still need to see Odin. And Shata. And Bahamut, I think. Never really used summons at all. We did use Alexander. I love how it's still playing. Like, they let so much of the music breathe until you actually leave the area. It doesn't just play the cutscene and then go back to normal. It always, like, lets it play a little longer until you actually, like, really leave the area. It does that with so much. Like, pretty much every side quest we've done. Like, the Kyrie side quest, like, the Kyrie theme kept playing until we were, like, pretty far away. It's another just little detail with the music that's really cool. I guess we'll just teleport out. Actually, uh, yeah. Actually, maybe we'll just stop here and then we'll we'll drive. Well, I'll drive there and save. Beep, 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 beep. He's still yelling. <laughs> I can't wait to see the payoff to this. Like, why does he just keep appearing and then dying? I must know. I need answers. Alright. Good place to stop here. So. What a day, huh? What an absolute crazy day. I mean, just, just crazy, man. I don't really have anything else specific. Ooh, wait, wait. I got that new weapon. I want to remember to equip it. Oh, ATB spent on other commands increases damage dealt. Affinity changes with ninjutsu. Can use while airborne. Shares gauge with purification. Max level 3. Huh? Man, that's like no magic attack. Man. Yuffie is nuts. Ooh. Oh, this that's efficacy, my bad. I wonder, I wonder magic focus works with this. I wonder if it just makes it last longer though. I'm gonna put in focus instead of efficacy. Wind damage up. No shot. Debuff extension, synergy damage up, max HP, magic attack. Well, now the magic attack isn't bad. And this weapon is nuts. That's going to be wild. All right. Well, like I said, man, I, like, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It just feels like every time we play, I get more convinced that every scene in this game is either a beautiful retelling of the original or the changes that are made are just so perfectly interwoven into like what would work in this atmosphere while still keeping the emotions that we wanted to feel from the original here. I... 
I loved every, you know, I mean, <laughs> what else is there to say? Like, it was just an amazing day. Every Everything was awesome. Gold Saucer was awesome. Um, it, it did help a little bit seeing the extra difficulties and stuff. Um, I feel like Gold Saucer does at least have a little bit more reason to go back to other than the Chocobo Racing and QB. So, um, you know, I, I still think overall it's, it, it's weird. It's a hard, like, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to organize my thoughts better about it before I say too much. But the, the return to Gold Saucer was awesome. And the whole date team and everything was awesome. And I can't wait to see how many crazy different versions of the dates we can get. We're going to have a whole stream dedicated to doing all the dates and all the, like, different little differences from whether or not you're on a date and what you do in each thing and the different theater things. And <laughs> it's going to be insane. Um, and I like the changes with, like, Kate Sith and everything. Um... Man, I feel like it was so long ago, I didn't even remember what we did at the start of the stream. Oh, all the Proto Relic stuff and, like, Gilgamesh and stuff was awesome. Um, yeah, man. Just awesome. So excited to see what comes next. Excited to see how this all comes together and what's gonna... Especially the crazy stuff with Aerith talking to Marlene and everything like I just can't wait want to know what happens and I couldn't be enjoying the ride anymore man it's just been awesome and thank you guys for being a part of it thank you for being a part of this awesome journey and I just appreciate you so much guys thank you so so much for all the support and for experiencing this with me I am truly blessed to not only be able to play this game but to be able to enjoy it with you guys and and bounce our thoughts off of each other and everything so thank you we'll say goodbye to youtube now youtube thank you so much for watching let's play final fantasy 7 rebirth hope you enjoyed hope you're continuing continuing to enjoy the playthrough and enjoy the game we will see you in the next episodes peace